What's up, everybody? This is Jack from Clover Trading. Today, I have an awesome topic that I want to share with you guys, and we're going to talk about trading versus gambling. How do we distinguish the two, and how do we make sure that we're trading and not gambling instead when we are trading? Now, before we get there, come here. Come a little closer. A little closer. All right. Hit the like and subscribe button. Do it. Clover said that I can't get the highest viewer to like ratio. And I said, easy, I got it, no problem. You guys got me. I got you because I'm about to share some awesome knowledge with you. So let's get to it. All right, imagine this. You're walking through the Win Las Vegas casino. You see a roulette table and you want to play some roulette. Okay, that's great. Good for you. You put some money down, you lose it. You lose it, you lose it, you lose it, and you lose it again. All right, now you bust it and you're broke. How do we make sure that doesn't happen when we're trading? Because sometimes we can take trades and we just keep losing and it seems like okay what's going on here is it the market is it me what is broken here is it my broker probably the broker let's be honest we're going to take cxai for example and we're going to pull up a roulette table statistics real quick and on roulette there's 36 numbers if you've never played roulette or you're too young to play roulette go look up a google image of it so you can familiarize yourself with it and there's a bunch of numbers bunch of zeros and with these are probabilities that are wildly against us if you take just a number you have a 2.77 percent chance of actually hitting that number. It is under 3%. So 33 times you may win once, which knowing how math and statistics work, it could be a lot longer than 33 times before you hit a number. Then what the casino likes to do is what if everybody's just on numbers? Well, then it's going to hit green zero because why would one of your 36 numbers work? And that's just kind of how statistics work. And that's why they do it. So it wipes the whole board, takes all your money. Oh, sorry, not a number hit. It was zero. And then better yet, they take it a step further at a double zero where your probability is going to be 2.6% chance of hitting a number. And then since COVID, casinos wanted more money to make up for the losses during the years. And now there's a triple zero. You can't make this up. It's insane that they even felt the need to add this. I mean, casinos already make so much money and then they're like, all right, let's add triple zero. Let's ruin people's day a little bit more. Imagine having every number and a zero and a double zero, but triple zero hits. GG, maybe next time, pal. Now, what we wanna do is avoid these gambling scenarios where there's a lot less odds on our side. In trading in the stock market, we want to be the house where we know we have a significant edge over every other trader. And that is what me and our partners, that's what we aim to do. We like to put ourselves in the situations with the best probabilities where we can find a good risk reward and then make money off it because that is how trading is done. And that is how it should be. It's not supposed to be just ups and downs, just riding waves, cheering, chanting. In reality, it's a lot less boring or a lot more boring. Yeah, even be dry sometimes, but is it really that dry when you're just making money? It may feel dry because same thing over and over again, but if you're making money, you're happy. And that's what we want to aim to do here. So let's go into these examples. So CXAI is former runner. It bounced on this day from eight to about 14.6. And then the next day it went up again, all the way to 14.2 and then went up to 15.6. Anyways, goes there and then the trend breaks and sellers begin taking control. And that is like, as a short seller, that is when you want to be capitalizing on this type of momentum. When the sellers run out, the juice runs out, and then there's a downtrend that occurs. So if we go to a spreadsheet, let's practice constructing a real trading plan, not some gambling thing where it's like, oh, I think it might go down here, click, and then it goes against you and you lose money. So we have a previous high day, 14.7. Okay, I guess that was a previous high day. And then the high day was 15.6. The push over the previous high day was about 6.1%. And as you see these examples occur, we can put them all into a spreadsheet and we can actually gain an understanding of how the stock reacts when these situations occur. So for example, this is what you would have probability of making a new high day, for example. So makes that high day at 15.6, slams down, trend breaks, sellers begin taking control. What is the probability of a new high day happening where buyers begin taking control again and the stock goes even further to 17, 18, 20, for example. And in this dummy probability, we have 75%. So you take four trades, one is statistically going to be a loser and then the other three will be winners. And we construct an entry price, 14 and a half, very doable. The stock chops around for a bit after it breaks down. So 14 and a half is your entry. You're risking high a day, which is 15.6. That is going to be a dollar and 10 cents a loss on a per share basis. Now that's going to equate to about seven and a half percent loss on your position. And now we need to construct how much do we want to lose? And this is an individualized thing for each trader. And for example, we have a thousand dollars here. You take this trade, you say, okay, I can risk a thousand dollars. That's very comfortable for my account. Let's go for 
for it and see what happens. Take a trade risking $1,000. We need to figure out how much size we can have. And to do that, we take the dollar risk divided by the dollar per share risk. And that is going to give us about 900. Now, for all you aggressive traders out there, bump it up to 910. For all you modest and much more relaxed traders out there, take it to 900. It's no big deal. It's all cool. We're just vibing. So we get the 12 target to cover. Boom, bang, bada, bing. It's all done. And this trade is going to net about $2,200. Now, the $2,200 is good, but you take this same trade over and over again. And for example, we're only using four trades here, even though it should be closer to 100 trades to find the real probabilities and payouts for this setup. It's going to equal about 6,800 for the three trades that win and then $1,000 in losses for the one trade that fails because you can't always be on the winning trade. Sometimes you can dodge a losing trade by just not being at the computer, but you can't always be on the winning side. That's just not how trading works. You have to accept how much you want to risk, take the trade, and then you either accept the loss or you make your payout. But as a net value, it's going to equal about $5,800 in profit, which that is very good. And I would take that all day. If I only lost one, I lost $1,000 all day. And that is trading. It's really not super exciting in the moment. It's more just risk management and making sure that your blind side is covered and that if the stock does perk back up, it squeezes all shorts, you are getting out at your designated risk. You can even set a stop loss where it just automatically liquidates your position. With that being said, you take the trade and it just works out very well. And that's just one scenario. Obviously, data needs to be built. You need to take hundreds of examples to really get a firm probability and a good sample set to derive your statistics from. And if you don't know how to derive statistics in Excel, I actually have a chat GPT video where you can ask him questions and he'll give you the answers for you. There's no reason not to be able to carefully construct these trading plans where you can put the odds on your side and you can be a more consistent trader. I'm Jack from Clover Trading. This is all for now. Come back next week for another video. And thank you for being here. Make sure to click the like and subscribe button.